Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. Let the record reflect all board members are present except Tom Prins is absent this evening. Recognition of visitors and guests, we'd like to welcome all of you here, the guests this evening. 1.3 correspondence and recognition, public participation. I've had no requests for public participation. 1.32, recognition of students, staff, and community. We have several to go through. Congratulations to Linda Neugebauer as being named as the Region 2AA Speech Coach of the Year. Congra congratulations to Sophia Soto, a fourth grade, a fourth grader at Intermediate School, was named the winner of the Minnesota Rural Water Association poster contest that was held statewide. Her poster is featured on the cover of Spring 2023 MRWA Today magazine, and she received a $100 gift card. So congratulations to Sophia. Congratulations to Tyler Jaycox for earning All Conference Days Golf and Lily Malberg and Maya Nixon for All Conference Girls Golf. Also congratulations to the boys track team for qualifying for Truce Team State Track Meet this Saturday at Stillwater. Congratulations to all parties. Okay, moving on to 2.0, approval of agenda. 2.1, consent agenda. I have two additions for the consent agenda. 4.22 is resignation of Tessa Dirks from her current position and she will be taking this assistance principal to middle school. And 4.32, approve employment of Matt Guardian. Guardian as an art teacher. So we'll add those two to the consent agenda. <clears throat> and also 2.2 is the main agenda. <clears throat> so we'll need a motion to approve the consent as amended and the main agenda. I move approval of the consent agenda with the additions and also the main agenda. Okay. Second. Motion by Lori, second by Matt to approve the consent agenda with additions and the main agenda as printed. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. 3.0 approval of minutes. I approve the uh, minutes from last month's meeting and the committee meeting minutes. Motion by Adam. Second. Second by Aaron to approve 3.1 and 3.2 as the minutes. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. 4.0 <clears throat> items on the consent agenda. We need approval. I make a motion to approve the items on the consent agenda with the additions that were approved earlier. Second. A motion by C, second by Matt to approve the consent agenda. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. 5.0 main agenda, monthly financial overview. Dave. Uh, you should have the revenues and expenditures report f through the end of April. Um, as you can see, we're running almost right dead on where we were last year with revenues at just over 79%. The expenditures are up a little bit from last year, but we do have a budget amendment, uh, which will bring that back in line uh, later in the agenda. Um, there's really been nothing extraordinary or special in, on either side of the ledger, so everything's going well. Okay, any questions for Dave? Okay, we'll move on to 5.2. Approve education, identity, and access management board <coughs> resolution. Five point two. Is that for you or 
Uh, well, it's it's an annual resolution that needs to be approved. So it's one of those we get every year, and it has to do with the uh, education identity access management piece of our, our work we do. So I'll make a motion to approve the education identity and access management board resolution. Okay, okay motion by Laurie. Second, Steve. Second by Steve to approve the education identity. <coughs> The NASIC Management Board Resolution. This is a roll call. Any discussion? This is a roll call vote. Ms. Studley. Aye. Mr. Lorenz. Aye. Ms. Schutte. Aye. Mr. Bloom. Aye. Mr. Schneider. Aye. Mr. Widboom. Aye. Motion carries. 5.3 approved 2023-24 VIBE calendar. So the instruction committee reviewed this. There, there is a difference what, in what I would call the vibe calendar versus a traditional calendar. Um, there is a lot of parent-teacher contact and staff development in August. So that starts in the August 7th and continues on until we start school. And the first day of school would be September 5th for vibe students. Um, and then it moves on to be somewhat of a traditional calendar at that point. And it aligns with 173 instructional days and 186 teacher contract days. I move approval of the VIBE calendar. Motion by Lori. Second. Second by Aaron to approve the 2023-24 VIBE calendar. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, signal probably saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. 5.4 approved budget amendment. This goes to who? I can just touch. I mean, basically, what uh, at this point in the year, there's uh, revised estimates on both the revenue and expenditure side of the of the books. Um, one of the revenues is interest is up and our interest earnings are up substantially from what we had originally budgeted, thanks to that. Um, the expenditures are a little, little bit of a lot of things. Uh, we have increased, obviously we had increased snow removal, we have increased sub costs and uh, a lot of little things that added up to that increase on the expenditure side. Okay, any, dis any, I guess we need a motion first. I move for approval of a budget amend amendment. Motion by Adam. Second, Steve. Second by Steve. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, signal probably saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign, motion carries. 5.5 approved resolution relating to the termination of non-renewal teaching contracts of a teacher contract. Yeah, and this is for Lisa Madison, which is a probationary. Typically, we would have done this with um, in April with the other ones, but it's due to Dr. Clark being out and Mr. Van Briesen taking over. Um, there was a little bit of a communication glitch and with that then we're moving this forward to do the non-renewal. Okay. I make a motion to approve the resolution for non-renewal. Second. Motion by Steve. Second. Second by, by Matt to approve the nation <coughs> of this contract. Any discussion? Hearing none, the roll call vote. Ms. Studley. Aye. Mr. Lorenz. Aye. Ms. Schutte. Aye. Mr. Bloom. Aye. Mr. Schneider. Aye. Mr. Widboom. Aye. The motion carries. 5.6, approve a collaborative extracurricular ag agreement with St. Mary School and Worthington Christian School. I move to approve the collaboration of the extracurricular agreement with St. Mary's and the Worthington Christian School. Second. Motion by Lori, second by Matt. 
I, I do want to bring up, based on the conversation at the operational committee, there was an adjustment made in there, and that the um, for St. Mary's and more than Christian, the allocation of costs, item A, was removed based on their recommendation, and that's what you're approving with that piece of the puzzle is out, or piece of the agreement, so. Right, and as discussed, this would be only normal student fees would be addressed by the parents or the student and no operational fees for facilities, correct? Correct. Okay. And what was the, the rationale or the basis for removing that clause? Um, so for roughly the last 10 to 12 years, um, Worthing Christian and St. Mary students have been allowed to participate in the extracurricular activities at the middle school. Um, what the reason for the agreement is we have had now that St. Mary's um, has seventh grade and potentially will look at starting eighth grade. Um, in that, we had a student running at a junior varsity because cross country was a 7-12 program. We had one running junior varsity and there should be a collaborative agreement that documents that that's approved. So that's the rationale behind the agreements. The removal was based on the fact that they are District 518 students in most cases is why there would not be a charge. Meaning, so we get, go ahead, Aaron, sorry. When you say that they are District 518 students, meaning that they will join public schools once they get to a um, age out of their current school? Well, or? it's a parent's choice. So parents could send them to another school or open enroll them to another school. Um, but the major currently the majority of those students that attend Worthing Christian or St. Mary's do come to the high school when they reach that point. And that's the rationale for why yeah. they are not charged a portion of the operation cost Correct. of the sport. Yeah. Okay. And in my opinion, they also live in District 518. So they do help with some taxes that come to the district in the operating levy for sure for one and the bond levy, so. They are residents of 518, so they do pay the taxes here on their property, so. I, I do wanna also make sure everybody understands when students, and I, I view, because there was a lot of conversation around this, this is also an opportunity to educate everybody um, students that go to example to a private school, um, we collect transportation dollars uh, for those students. We collect um, special ed if they qualify for special ed. Um, we collect title dollars, which also flow back through to the private school. And then of course, uh, if they live in the district, they're helping pay the bond referendums. Other, that's the four areas that the district collects when parents choose to go to a private school. If they choose to open and roll out, the majority of the dollars follow those students other than the bond referendum dollars. So if they go to a neighboring district, those dollars follow the students, including the operating referendum dollars. Um, the other part I wanna be clear is when a parent pays their tax dollars, we may get that back in state aid. But we are limited, if you remember when we did the levy in the fall, we have a cap and we're told from the Department of Ed the dollars we can levy. And the rest comes back in general state aid from the state. Just to help educate people where the money comes from. What athletics? do these private schools offer? And I know Matt, you can probably help. Is it basketball, volleyball that the Christian school offers? Right, and track and soccer. You know, my only complaint that I've heard about this is the kids that come from that school get to double up in playing time, which is a huge advantage over the public school kids. And I'm more open to cooperating with the private schools than I am the public schools at this point, but 
I mean, in the future, I guess that's something I would explore is should they get more playing time than these kids that are in the public school and when they're getting to play in a private school setting already, I mean, that's, that's a huge advantage for them to double dip in minutes. Steve. No, I was just, I was gonna ask John, if I remember right, um, the state aid, if they're not enrolled in our school, then we don't get the state aid per, per pupil allotment either. So we're, we're getting that funding with the students who are in our school that help pay for these programs, some of the extra costs that are associated with sports that, you know, that the participation fees don't, don't pay for. We don't collect that for students who aren't in our school. So if they're open and rolling out and stuff, it, it's only fair that we collect some money back to help cover those operational costs and stuff that, that would potentially get paid for by the state aid allotment that we get if they were students. So just That's want to point that out. That's typically why there's a per pupil participant yeah. cost to example other public schools that we co-op with. Yep. There's, yep. based on the activity, it ranges the cost per activity are different. Some sports are, and I'm using sports as an example, there's other activities, but some sports are uh, more expensive than others. Mr. Chairman, the, you know, ultimately the grand scheme of, the, of the, the concept is this is middle school student athletes that are 97.9 of them will attend our high school. And so, I mean, that, I think we have to do everything we can to provide them the opportunity to uh, excel at their student athlete opportunities and be prepared to be part of our varsity programming when they enter the high school. And I mean, we continuously saw throughout this past year that we struggled to fulfill a JV softball program because our numbers were low. We've talked about a lower number base in a lot of our athletic programs. So if we have an opportunity for 10 to 12 students to be coming into our system through the private school, to me we should do everything we can do to encourage them and not to, to worry about a few dollars. As we heard from our revenue perspective, in the, in the grand scheme of things, a few dollars on millions of dollars is really not worth potentially deterring somebody from being part of the programming. And, Mr. and I would also add to that that uh, if those students are have a good relationship with other students within our district and, and are right. coming as athletes, we probably have a very good chance that they want to continue their education with us also. So to that tie-in when they're younger makes a big difference, I think, in, in what they do for the future. So I, I, think it's, I think it's a positive for us in the long run. Is that the percentage that does come, or was that just a number you were shooting, Matt? For the, uh, the number of students that come here? Um, it used to be different 20 years ago when I started, but almost 95% of St. Mary's or higher come to us. Or the in Christian, it used to be lower when I started 20 years ago. Now it's about 95% of them come our way. So it, it is a good intermingle type program for those kids to become part of our system. And the chairman, the, uh, at WCS, they had uh, eight students that participated in three middle school sports per student this past year. And St. Mary's uh, had 10 students participating in at least one of the sports offered. But that certainly helps our middle school numbers. And we haven't gotten to uh, 5.7, but I'd say that the same thing is somewhat true when we get to that one, that students in that school, a lot of them come to Worthington also, and, and uh, the sooner we get them uh, acclimated into our programs at a younger age, the more likely they are to, to continue on when they get to high school. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion, signify probably saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. 5.7, <coughs> collaborative extracurricular agreement with Round Lake Brewster School District. Mr. Chairman, I would move to approve the collaborative <coughs> agreement with Round Lake Brewster School District. Matt. Second. <coughs> Steve. Any dis, oh yeah, 
Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? I struggle a little more with this again, like I did with Adrian. And, you know, there's a huge percentage of our kids that go to Round Lake Brewster at the younger ages. And I don't think we get the percentage of the private schools that come into our high school setting. And, you know, my job here is to worry about the kids at District 518 and support them. And I just, I have a hard time taking playing time and practice time away from those kids. We might be num low on numbers, but, you know, when COVID hit, Adrian, Round Lake Brewster, Folda, they sure didn't care to take the kids away from us then. And, yeah, we've gotten a gotten a chunk back, but I just have a little hard feelings about some of that, and they're also looking at making a big expansion onto their school and adding another one or two grades, aren't they? If I'm not mistaken. Same grades. They're wrong like Brewster's a K-8 They're not adding school. any grades, no. Yeah. Okay. No. I know there was a lot of Facebook keyboard experts calling me ignorant last month, but I don't know. I'm supporting our kids, and this one I'm not going to approve. How many numbers do we have coming from there? Do you know? Uh, well, 70 per last year, <coughs> just about 70% of the students that attended Round Lake Brewster were our resident students. Um, of that, we get probably 90% of them back to our district when they come are close, 85 to 90 percent. So they do come back. Um, the difference here, and I will tell you, <clears throat> in this agreement, we do charge them a purple charge. The other difference is um, the reason you would want to charge them is the uh, dollars follow those students from state aid as well as our operating referendum. So I, I will debate with you that it's appropriate to charge them a per participant cost. Right, so to be clear, this, this agreement is different than the one with St. Mary's and Correct. the Worthington Christian School. So they will be paying a normal fee and operational costs per sport, whatever that. Wherever they participate. Yeah, okay. How many students do we get in sports, so you know? I, we have never had a participation agreement with them before or a collaborative agreement, so we don't know what that will be. Mr. Chairman, the, as far as the timing on this, is it similar to the Adrian agreement for, for years, or is it a, a one year at a time kind of agreement? <clears throat> Typically, collaborative agreements at the varsity or that, that level are two years, right. can be renewed. This can be annual. Just because of the middle school level? Yeah. Okay. It says, uh, it says in the uh, last page on the middle city and asylums, it's a three year starting on July 1st and going through 2026. So. And again, their board will discuss this at their upcoming meeting. So we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Well, the difference is this being we are charging the cost of the program to the student. Different. Than, well, I mean, okay, I want to be clear. We don't charge the students. No, the we student, charge the, district, the school. The school yeah. district, right. But we still don't get the student participation. Right? We don't get the state aid of those kids until they come into our school, which we're losing dollars on again, correct? No, we are, yeah. Those dollars follow those kiddos. And up to this point, we've had um, students from St. Mary's and Worthington Christian School participating in this new agreement that we just passed is formalizing that. Whereas this proposed agreement with Round, Round Lake Brewster would be inviting students for the first time to participate in, in activities in our district? Yeah. Okay. Are there other uh, schools that are um, interested in this type of thing that um, 
we could foresee as inv extending at invitations this time, in no. the future? They either, at this time, I'm not aware of any others. Okay, any further discussion? Everyone understands that it's different than the other agreement. Districts are being charged our cost for the program to the, to the other district. <clears throat> but they're still able to, to take part. Any further discussion? This is a regular vote. Yep. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Motion carries. 5.8, approve West Building Demolition. Dave, you want to cover? And just so you're aware, uh, Nick Willman from ICS is here. So if you have specific questions about the demo, he's here to help answer any of that. Yeah, we opened bids last week <clears throat> for the demolition of West Elementary. We did receive six bids, which was good. Um, the low bid was from DRC Incorporated for $398,000. And then there was also an alternate uh, bid which would revise the, the schedule from a summer to a fall demolition. And if we were to accept that alternate, there's a savings of $100,000. Uh, the bids ranged all the way up to $680,000. Uh, so there was quite a range in the in the bid prices, but uh, ICS has worked with this company before and they they recommend that we, we go with them for the bid. The question would be whether or not you want to consider the alternate. The, a, a couple questions. Number one is, is uh, the alternate isn't you either do it one or the other, it's you have the option or, or if we choose the option to have them do it in the fall, then they have to do it in the fall? If they elect to say, hey, wait a minute, I'm gonna do it in the summertime now, do we have to pay them the additional amount? Or can we just say, hey, it's a, it's, we're gonna take the alternate and you do it in the fall? I think if we accept the alternate, they're under contract for that amount and they have the option to start like after September 1st. But if they change their mind and wanted to come in the summertime, they could still do it, but they still get paid the alternate price because that's what we approved? Yes. Okay. Um, also, uh, this is more on the spec specifications. What, what's happening with the pilings that are in the ground? Are they taking those down to some specific depth, digging down and cutting those off? Uh, yes. They're going below footings and cutting them off below footings, so roughly six to seven feet. Okay. I got that right, didn't I, Nick? There will be an as-built drawing that will follow when the project is done, just kind of showing where they're at for any future. If, say you guys can sell the ground and somebody wants to build on it, you'd have a drawing that shows height of those so they'd know that where it's at. Okay. So this, this bid is not including the alternate. So it's 100 less than this? So if, if as... As it was explained, the bid came in at 398000 um, You can accept that, and they would start in June. If you accept the alternate, which is a $100,000 deduct, which would lower the price to 298000 then they would start after September 1 and do it over the winter or late fall into the winter. Do you have a sense of the, the latest point in time in which they would demolish if we accept option B? The demo would be done uh, over the winter, probably finish up in January would be my assumption, but you wouldn't get seeded because uh, part of the bid is to seed that whole area with grass. Um, that can't be done by Minnesota standards until I believe it's like April or early May. So you'd have a, an empty lot with no building. It would have
have all graded black dirt. You just wouldn't have the grass growing on it yet. Mr. Chairman, a question for the expert. Um, is there any reason we wouldn't take the $100,000 deduct? And Depends on how bad you want the building down. If it's something that's bothering you having an empty building. Um, one thing this contractor did call me and tell me was that he um, has done a number, that, I mean, all he does is demo schools. So the first thing he would do if it was accepted is he's going to come put cameras in there so people don't get in there and start graffitiing or doing stuff in there. They shouldn't be. Um, that would be the couple concerns would be if you're worried about people getting into it, um, you'd probably want to get it down sooner. If you're just tired of looking at it, you'd want to get it down sooner. Other than that, I guess I don't know any reason why I, yeah, why I would dissuade you from the, the $100,000 savings. Thank you. Lori? I'm just saying, I don't think there's a hurry, in my opinion, to have to have this done this summer. I mean, it's an eyesore, yes, and all that, but we've waited 20 years, temporary <laughs> programming in that building, so another three or four months, in my opinion, I would support the fall, do it in the fall and save 100000 I had uh, some people approach me asking if it's going to be open or possible for public, like they did with Central Elementary, and so to come in and... and take a few mementos or do something, salvage some stuff out of the school. I don't know if that was something that we would allow or not allow for people. I know there's, uh, I've seen examples in the community where, where people have had parts of the building and they've, and they've got them on you know, display or used it in, in construction. And it looks very nice, you know, chunks, pieces of, of, of rock or, or, or stone on walls, stuff like this. So I was just wondering if we're going to, if we would allow any of that type of thing for people to come in and grab a memento or something from the building or do something like that. Personally, I don't know what memento they would really want out of that building. You'd be surprised what people remember. I remember when I, when I, before I built my house, somebody pulled up and said, can I have that stone? That was a stone by the front door of the house, and we were going to bury it, and they wanted it because that's when they grew up. They remembered that stone. So people have memories of strangest things, and, and uh, so I just, I, the question was asked. I just thought I'd bring it up and see if there was any, if any plan I, to allow that. I guess I would recommend that if there's somebody that interested in something, if it's even still there, mm -hmm. they would need to contact the district office and then we'll talk to them about it. Okay, sounds fair. I don't know if I want the whole public going and ransacking the building necessarily, but if somebody had something that they felt strongly about. Yeah, we'll do an appointment only thing. Is, is there gonna be like a treasure hunt for that time capsule we keep reading about or hearing about? Uh, Going to go out and dig up the dig up the front lawn or something to try and find that. Or? Okay. <laughs> I make a motion that we accept the bid from DRC and take the hundred thousand dollar deduction and let them start next fall. I'll second that motion. A motion by Adam, second by Lori to take the bid of would be two ninety eight starting after September first, right? I think it'll be mostly winter time though. Yeah, that's. That's kind of the way he made it sound, is that he'd do a lot of this demo work. Obviously, the hard part will be spreading out black dirt if it gets too cold. But I think the majority of it will be late fall, early winter. Is there a completion date then, or completion times they have to have it done? We talk about going into winter, but are we talking about like finishing it? I mean, remove finishing the removal. And in February or March or something, or do they have to have this done by a specific date? There's no end date other than next spring. Okay. And one other question, then, the unit price is soil corrections. Uh, what type of soil corrections do we anticipate? That one I can't answer. So I think the concern would be with the unknown of what's under this building, what these pilings look like. Um, some of them probably have sank. Some of them, I mean... So they don't want to come in here and have an extra five semi loads worth of dirt that they got to bring in um, when they get underneath this slab since those pilings probably some of them have rotted because the walls I know there were some walls that had kind of some floors that were unlevel um, so essentially that 40 yard or forty dollars a cubic yard would be if they run into something unforeseen that we would have to label as unforeseen and not bitter error. So, so it's not a, a soil correction, like taking out contaminated soils Correct. and replacing it. It's, it's actually putting, bringing extra fill to level the site up. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay. 
We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. 5.9. Twenty three twenty four resolution for membership in this Minnesota State High School League. So this was not presented at the instructional committee. We added it. Um, it's the annual resolution for our high school to p participate in the Minnesota High School League. Um, they are doing it a little different. So with this, it's electronic signatures. So Ultimately, I'll go in and sign if you approve this, and then uh, Mr. Schneider will have to go in and sign electronically. They'll send him an email. So, But it's the annual resolution we do every year. Okay. Um, go ahead. I'll move to approve the 2023-2024 resolution for membership in the Minnesota State High School League. I'll second that motion. Motion by Aaron, second by Lori. To Approved the 23-24 membership in the Minnesota, Minnesota State High School League. Any discussion? Um, has those membership fees leveled out a little bit? I mean, a few years ago through COVID, every year they were higher and higher. So that um, they changed their structure. They're about the same as they were last year. Yeah, it's higher, yeah. no doubt, a lot higher than it was previously. Yeah, they they had a. They're going through a review. I, weren't they looking at at how they set the different rates or adjust them? Did they do any adjustments on on their rates that they're charging? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. So all that all that complaining and all that excitement we had really didn't result in any changes, really. Okay. No. Okay. <clears throat> Did we vote on that already? No. 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 I forget. <laughs> Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Roll call. Roll call vote. Ms. Dudley? Aye. Mr. Lorenz? Aye. Ms. Schutte? Aye. Mr. Bloom? Aye. Mr. Schneider? Aye. Mr. Woodboom? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, that's it for the normal general going to reports. John, superintendent's report. So just have a couple quick items to update you on. I'll try when I get to the legislative not to go too crazy, but um, anyway, the district action plan, I did update it. Um, their administrators are looking it over. There may be a few updates again related to this, but again, remember this is a working document that guides where we're headed on some of the projects or things that we are doing. So just FYI for you, um, visit with the administrators today. We have approximately 20 plus open certified positions um, that are we're waiting to try and fill at this point. Some in a higher need area than probably others where we might be able to get by, but we continue to get a higher done every week the way it seems. So. We're, we're making headway, but it's slow. So just FYI for you. Um, legislatively, uh, I'll do this pretty quick, but right now the education bill will pass. It'll be four and two, and it'll be indexed to inflation between the range of 2% to 3%. So no lower than 2%. No higher than three. Um, special education cross subsidy for next year will be 40%. The following year, 50%. Um, they did shore up the uh, school readiness VPK slots, um, and they created 5,200 more slots. So there's money tied to the preschool numbers. Don't know what they are yet, but. That'll help support that. Um, they did pass legislation for the cooperative facilities lease levy. So all of us will see on our levy sheets a $65 um, per pupil levy. 
that will come through on the lease levy side. Um, there is other uh, student support personnel aid, um, read the READ Act or Literacy Act is part of this. Um, one that we were in favor of, board authority to renew expiring uh, operating levies. So example, our operating levy expires next year. You have the opportunity, not next year, the year after, but um, you have the opportunity to approve that $500 per pupil levy. Um, you will have to do that before, not this June 15th, but next June 15th. Did they state how long it could stay in place? Uh, same, same number of years. Same dollar there. amount, same number of years. Okay. Um, there is some transportation sparsity aid and school so social workers will now qualify for MA building, billing. There's EL learner aid, school library support aid, American Indian aid, full service community aid, multi-tier systems of support aid, uh, paraprofessional training aid and cybersecurity grants. There are a number of grants that are part of the legislation, so just such as the Grow Your Own programs, those type of things. Um, things that are going to be challenge and probably huge challenges for education, unemployment insurance which goes into effect May 28th. <coughs> and that's gonna be a big one. <coughs> Restrictions on suspension and seclusion rooms. <coughs> Excuse me. There also is some curriculum. No, I'm all right, Aaron. This is unopened. So you yeah. <coughs> there is some course pieces, government and citizenship or so finance requirements. <clears throat> um, in there, the jobs portion, labor portion, there is new language for terms and conditions to be a part of bargaining. Does Matt mean you have to agree to it? That just has to be part of it. Earn safe and sick time and it's set at 20 weeks. And then transportation policy for our type three vehicles, there is flexibility, anything 2007 or newer, as long as it's approved by the DOT for service, we can continue using it. <clears throat> so what's all the finances mean to us? I'm not gonna go through each one, but in 2024, the estimated dollar amount that we will see as new revenue is $3,341,999. In 2025, the new revenue would be $4,428,458. Now remember, those are estimates. Not everything's totally defined. So just want to kind of give you the heads up where legislation is falling and it's going to create some difficulties for all of you in decisions. So and I'll probably leave it at that. Otherwise, I'll get on my soapbox and <clears throat> we'll be here a lot longer. Okay, is that it? That's it. I'm going to quit. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Instructional committee report. Uh, Mr. Chair, everything has been covered uh, except we did talk a little bit about um, the mental health um, services that we're getting in the district um, from the ESSER funding. And of course, that ESSER funding is going to uh, run out next year. So we did talk a little bit about that we'll have to decide as a, as a board next year what that would look like to make sure we can maintain some of that mental health counseling once that money runs out. Otherwise, everything else was covered. 
Okay, thank you, Laurie. Operations Committee. I guess that was you and Ronnie this time. Um, everything there was covered as well. We, we did talk a little bit about the watershed update just briefly, that they're staking that out, and you can see a little bit of movement out there, what that's going to look like, but no definite. Sounds like that'll be some dirt activity next summer, possibly, on the watershed. On the watershed. Yeah, so it's just... That's a, a year away before they get everything. Otherwise, it's been covered. A, a question to that committee, Mr. Chairman, on the, the WABA presentation and discussion. Was there any uh, points of interest there? <coughs> Which was that? Um, WABA brought what their long-term plan is with example putting a canopy over the oh, right. the bleachers uh, entrance to the area um, trees park type thing playground so yeah actually <coughs> i'll write myself a note and i'll send you the booklet thank you so they would rather that we put money into the existing field than build new fields is that right they never really said that, but they are looking for support, I'm assuming. Yeah, they really th just went through the booklet of what they've done so far and what their goals are, how much money that they've raised so far, how much more money they want to raise, and kind of the long term for the project. Um, we left it that we're going to discuss it at a work session at some point when we set that up to talk about fields and what that looks like. So there was nothing more than their presentation, really. Okay. Any other reports? Other business? When are we going to look at our work session? Are we just going to send some dates out sometime? And we'll send some dates out for June. Okay. Yep. So we'll look for a work session in June after we get the budget issues from the state. Clarified. Sometime in June, we'll do that. Uh, any future business? Know of anything else to you? When is um, graduations again? Um, yeah, graduation. Thank you. That's a good one to bring up. Uh, Learning Center graduation is Thursday, May 25th. I believe that's at 6 o'clock. And the high school graduation is May 26th at 6 o'clock. And we do ask all board members attend. They're both at 6 o'clock. Correct. We should be there by what, 5? Um, I think I saw the email. They would like you there about at least 20 minutes early so that they can pin the flower on you or somebody can pin the flower on. Okay. Any other business? If not, we'll call the meeting adjourned.